I think the most dramatic changes are in the things that people are doing with their time in their late teens. So um, if you think back to sort of the mid-1970s, even through to the middle of the 1980s, m m a lot of people uh, would have left school at 16, gone out to work, maybe stayed on a little bit to do some vocational courses, but essentially there was a youth labour market. And there isn't today. So what we see is a real difference in how young people between the ages of 16 and 18 are spending their time, because so many more of them are in education, and that might stretch on for years and years. So the average age of leaving home now is you know, in, in the early 20s. And as we have heard a lot of recently, um, graduate employment even has fallen. So the notion that you would be involved and somehow engaged in the work world from the age of 16, I think, has been a really dramatic shift. In other respects, I think um, things have perhaps not changed very much or have changed for the better. So we did look at um, family relationships um, and we were very struck by... Uh, the amount of time people spend with their teenagers now compared to what they might have done in the 1970s, how much supervision goes on, how much sort of engagement and talking. Um, and I think there's been very positive changes. Um, there's a lot more parenting, I suspect, for longer now. Well, there's widely documented huge changes in, in family structure since the, uh, since the 1970s and the um, much higher rates of um, divorce, people, uh, children were more likely to experience divorce now than they were then. But I think what all the research points to is family structure, per se, is not really a story. The story is um, relationships, it's poverty, it's, um, it's stress. So I think that um, what, what we wouldn't want in any way to imply is that family structure is necessarily um, a key part of the changes. But where it has impacted on family life um, and on people's relationships with their parents, then I think it's important. It proved very, very difficult to um, get anything very causal out of the studies that we looked at. And we weren't doing primary research, we were going to what had been done already and saying, have these questions been looked at? And essentially, um, they haven't. We don't, there's not very much research about. Um, the causes of social change and change at the sort of population level. There's lots on change at the individual level, but we were asking really quite difficult questions and literature wasn't always there. I think there is, however, evidence um, that some of the trends may be related. So, for instance, the trends in substance use, um, in drug and, and alcohol use, um, those which are to some extent more positive now, so peak increases in substance use sort of in the 1980s. But I think it's possible that they may play a part in low-level symptoms of depression and anxiety um, and uh, overlaps between alcohol and conduct disorder. So I think they will turn out to be part of the story. Well, I think the interesting thing about the alcohol trends is that they, uh, overall they look quite good, but if you scratch the surface, there are some subgroups where we are more concerned. And one of the things that we're concerned about is that you know, compared to Europe, we had children drinking at a much earlier age, we had children getting drunk much earlier. Um, and we have children drinking more if they drink, they drink more sort of more binge drinking. And um, virtually on every measure that you take, we, we don't do so well as the rest of Europe, even though the overall trends are, are getting better for, for all groups. Um, and I think that our feeling was that we needed to toughen up on some of the, um, uh, the, the bigger public health interventions such as um, going back and looking again at pricing and availability to, to young people. I, I do think that our story is actually largely positive. Um, we Even our initial studies on rates of mental health problems apply to a minority of the age group. It's not the majority who are anxious and depressed. And the teenage years are always years of turmoil and discovery and risk taking and that, you know, that's going to go on forever. Um, I actually think in lots of ways teenagers' lives are, are much better now and I was really heartened by the stuff that we had on parenting and families and relationships. Um, some of the educational trends are terrific. It's great that so many young people are keeping up education for longer. Um, we just need to be really careful that we haven't got vulnerable groups who are adversely affected by the same things that are affecting other groups positively. Education changes affect some groups very, very positively, but they may be affecting other groups negatively if you are not really 
you know, who were ever really just destined for that strand in the first place. I worry that some people are getting squashed into routes that don't really benefit Do them. Think? The huge, huge change is the, is the economic, the, the work side, and we have to really rethink how we engage with young people as a whole, how we give them something meaningful to do, how we make them feel that they've got some contribution to make, how we value them in a context where there are no jobs. And I feel slightly...